What's going on, people? Welcome back to the channel. KG is back. First video postseason and everything else like that. Well, after the giveaway one yesterday. But yeah, man, there's some stuff to talk about, some stuff I got on my mind, and we're going to get through it together. There's a decent amount of people in the chat already. Uh, smash a like on the video if you haven't already. Uh, and if you're watching the replay, smash a like on the video that you're watching. So yeah, I mean, listen, yeah. First of all, I just got to say quickly on this as well. Callum 66, legend for doing the RAF giveaway. Yeah, that is still ongoing. But yes, I'm aware of, of uh, a scammer that tried to infiltrate the, the whole giveaway, which tried to ruin it all. But I'm not going to let that happen. There was like over 100 replies to people uh, from this fake person that was pretending to be me. I deleted all of them. But what I will say, and I've put a message out on that video and on the, on the community post, is... Well, it's not June the 1st, so the, the competition of winner wouldn't be announced yet. But when it is me, you'll know it's me because my name will be highlighted and there will never be any requests for money. There's none. So it doesn't matter whether you're in Australia, India, wherever you are, postage and packaging will be paid by myself. And it's from you, from the channel, from the donations you've been given and everything else like that. So please just be alert of, of scammers. They're trying to ruin it and they, they really tried their best on this one. Over 100 replies to people. I mean, wow. It, they're opportunists. That's what they are. It's like when you get those texts from, say, Royal Mail saying that you've got to click this link to uh, get your package, but you know that you haven't ordered anything. So just be wary about that, people. It's, it's, it is very frustrating, very annoying, but we can't let them uh, put us down like that or, or try and get in the way of a good giveaway. Because it is, as people have said, it's a good giveaway. Rafinha signed shirt. It's on the video before. All the instructions are on there. So if you're interested, go on the video before. Uh, yeah, some people thought they won. Yeah, and, and and somebody kindly sent me the um, some screenshots of what they're asking for in terms of how do you want this delivered and making you select a, a delivery thing. I, what I would say as well, people, just think about how I talk. Just think about how I talk. And, and I always use the, uh, the, the brown hands when I'm doing things. So I never use the yellow one. So just obviously just beware and just know that it, it you'll know when it's me people so i just wanted to say that um i just wanted to get that out of the way first uh, and we won't let those people ruin it man you know I, I i appreciate the hustle but don't hustle on my channel please but yeah today i want to talk about transfer targets that i've got in mind uh in terms of what i, I would like Leeds united to target realistically and it's might seem out of the realm of, of realism, but I, I do think they're all attainable if you can sell them on the project. You know, we've just seen Kamara go from uh, go to Aston Villa on a free. Now, Kamara was being linked with a whole host of Champions League and European level clubs, but Aston Villa get in there quick. They get Steven Gerrard to talk, and obviously their people behind the recruitment team get in there and have sold him a project. A bit like Bruno Gromera's at Newcastle. Yes, it's easier for them as they've got a wedge of cash, but you've still got to be sold on a project when you're a player who possibly wants to play European football, but you're willing to take a step back. Hey, a bit like Rafinha did for us when he left Wren to come to Leeds United. He left Champions League football to come to Leeds United. So there is... There is definitely a way of getting these players. Sporting Central, please. He will not be on the list, but I do want to get some of your your players' list uh, names as well. Yeah, absolutely, Jamie. Unreal signing for Villa Kamara. It's it's tremendous for free as well. I, I like what they're doing. I I I like what they're doing, man. They they're doing some real good stuff. And you just think about their midfield, like even I I would say probably Douglas Louise is probably surplus to requirements now. If you're looking at all of their midfielders, out of McGinn, Ramsey, uh, Coutinho, Wendia, it's going to be interesting to see who's uh, who's available. But uh, I like Douglas Louise. I've got to say, I've got to say, um, Minamino would be great. Yeah, he's been linked, but there will be some there will be some players that we have that I haven't mentioned on here, and that I don't think other people have mentioned. So. Hopefully, this should be a decent show. I want to touch on as well Eddie Gray's comments on Bielsa later. And something that I haven't done on here before, player ratings. But it's going to be for the, the whole season. And, I, and I'll tell you why I'm doing player ratings when it comes to that side, uh, section of the video. But yeah, listen, over 150 of you in here at this time, which is great. Um, thank you so much. Um, let's have a look. Charlie Brown, yes, now, KG. Hoping for a good window. Me too, man. Maybe Brownhill from Burnley. 
could be a good transfer. If this is Connor's burner account, please get out of the chat. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Charlie Brown. For me, no, but I do have some uh, players that are that are better than him. I would say so. Uh, Jack Wilson with Brendan Aronson. Yeah, I'm not going to talk about Brendan Aronson here because I think that one's going to be pretty much done and we'll talk about that in a completely separate video. I think that one's basically just dotting the I's and crossing the T's, isn't it? So, yeah. Yeah, Dan Savage. There are some Villa players I would take. Louise is class. He absolutely is. He absolutely is. Um, I mean, and Luke w, Luke w here, who replaces Rafinha's production? Well, I mean, the rumours are... I mean, it's room, it's silly season now, isn't it, people? Um, but Rafinha's... Up, you know, there's reports saying that he's handed a transfer request. There's rumours that we've rejected a bid. There's rumours that Barcelona are having problems now, forking up some money. It's, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. It's going to be interesting to see what happens. Uh, Frankie Smokes, how about Aaron's from Norwich KG? For me, no. And, and, and the reason why is I think he's still, I think he's got that Norwich stink on him. And it's a lot like his, his old partner, Ben Godfrey, who played in centre back for them. He still looks a little shaky from those Norwich days myself. I don't think he's been that impressive for Everton. I thought he'd go to Everton and, and go into a new system at the time. It was under Ancelotti. But for me, I don't know. I'd, Max Aarons, for me, just hasn't impressed me enough. And there are players that play in relegated teams and teams that are worse. I mean, Rafinha is a prime example. And they stand out. They look like they've got a bit more about them. But for me, Max Aarons isn't it. I think the guy um, the guy that surpassed him is Jed Spence, and he's one on my list. I think it, it's a no-brainer, though. Jed Spence would be a target for me. People keep on saying he's at Forest, but he's actually at Middlesbrough people. So unless he's guaranteed, again, unless he's guaranteed European football at his next club, there is no reason why we shouldn't be going in for Jed Spence in the summer. There is no reason at all. Um, yeah, I mean, some of you with Max Aaron's comments here, yeah. Um, but yeah, so for me, I would say Jed Spence has supplanted uh, Max Aaron's in that, you know, that age bracket kind of right back he's just got more to his game as well Jeff Spence I'm really impressed with him but are we going to be in for these people we'll we'll see we'll see um Luke W what about Drame back on the team I, th I think that's a conversation that Drame and have to uh will have to have with the club there's a lot of water under the bridge listen you guys know how I felt about Drame leaving I was all for it and I said it was right for him to go at the time. He wasn't getting the football and he probably felt he needed championship football and to get in proper reps. But not everyone was echoing my thoughts. Not everyone was echoing my thoughts. People were telling him that he, he he's turned his back on the club and that he should never play for the football club again. He's abandoned the Bielsa and all this other stuff. Guys, he was justified in his decision to go. It was the right move for him. And he even got player of the year at Cardiff after all that. But that's going to be a conversation. I guess we'll find out in the next couple coming weeks if drama is going to be a part of the club or not. Um, but yeah, listen, people, and afternoon to everyone in the chat, man. Shout out to all of you in here, man. Uh, yeah, knowing Kenan, uh, Kenna has left for Hibs. He has. He signed on a free for them. And that's going to be one of many that start to churn out of the club. Is That's one of many that are going to have to leave. But I'm, I'm focusing more on incomings today because... Regardless of what I think needs to go, we need to add. And then at least then we can go, well, at least that player now goes on the bench. I think that's probably the best thing for me to do at this point. Um, keep Rafa. Gavin, I would love to. I would absolutely love to uh, to keep Rafinha. That would be the dream. If we could keep him and Calvin Phillips, I mean, you build around those players. Ideally, in a realistic, in a, in a perfect world, we'd, build around these players, but I'm not sure if they'll be sold on another uh, project at this club again. I'm not sure. Uh, Jack Wilson, burn all the deadwood. And Jack, you mentioned um, John Swift earlier. Listen, John Swift was something that I felt we needed as a boost mid-season. And I, and I even said as well then, I said, and then next season, he'll probably be on the bench once we get better. Um, but at this point in time, I wouldn't go for John Swift. Uh, and that's purely because I would have put him on the bench anyway. For me now, we need to focus on first eleven players, and that's where I'm. That's where I am with that. The, the good thing is, anyway, everything I say is on camera, so 
you know, you can always go back and check it as well. <laughs> but yeah, listen, let me get into some of these players, people. Right. One I mentioned before, Aaron Hickey, uh, left back, Scottish um, player. Obviously, he's not going to be uh, international based at the moment with uh, Kieran Tierney and Andy Robertson his way. But he's had an impressive season at Bologna. Been monitoring him for a while. All these players I'm talking about, I've monitored for a while. So I'm just going to get that out of the way now. KG scouting system, as Colin calls it. But Aaron Hickey's very impressive. Um, gives you that energy down the left-hand side. And and he's got a little goal in him too. Not, not frequently, but he's got a good goal in him too. Um, and he's someone that I would absolutely love to see um, at Leeds United on the left-hand side. Uh, I've got Brennan. Shall I stay with defence or shall I just go all the way around? Jed Spence, I've already spoke about, so I won't speak about Jed again. Uh, Brennan Johnson, obviously, that's all dependent on Forrest and if they come up or not. So I'll be watching that play a final with intrigue. But Brennan Johnson, for me, plays on the wing, but he can play inside too. And I think that's very important under Jesse Marsh uh, that we have somebody that can play centrally in attacking midfield. Again, Brendan Johnson, please, before you say championship player, the kid's coming up and he's going to be on that next bracket like Elise, like Eze. And I think he may even surpass them. Big statement, but I think he may surpass them because he's got more of a goal for it in him rather than just being a creator. So Brendan Johnson, for me, would be an absolute... I would love to see him at Leeds United, honestly. Uh, and this is from me when I saw him on loan at Lincoln City in the, in the playoffs. Then I thought, wow. This kid's good, you know, where, where's he from? And I saw he was on loan from Forest, And I thought to myself, hmm, let me see how he gets on in the championship. Because I need to see him at that next level before I can really get a gauge on him. And he's just come on all the way, leaps and bounds. He's so key for Forrest. And again, it's Jed Spence and for, um, Johnson down that right-hand side have just been killing teams this season. Yeah, and six times Brennan Johnson is a baller. He is, absolutely. Um, and yeah, he's... He, just a quality player, creator and goal scorer, uh, and arrives in the box late. Something, people, that's one thing I need to see the next season. Our midfielders arriving in the box late. We have not had that all season long. Like, literally all season long. When's the last time you saw a midfielder just running in and smacking one in the top corner or even bottom corner? Doesn't happen. Doesn't happen. Uh, Jamie, Hase Moir available for 15 million euros. Yeah, I mentioned that one last night on um, on the debrief. He is available apparently for 12 and a half million pounds if you want to convert it. I mean, th these are players that we should be trying to sign if we're looking to get to that next level. And I'm not talking about European football here, but I'm talking about just challenging for those because you've seen that cluster of teams in the middle of the table. It's very much alike, isn't it? But you've got to have those kind of players to be in the mix. Um, <laughs> Darren, <laughs> KG, can you take over Orta's job? Well, you know, <laughs> oh my days, Andrew. You've I haven't put him on the list, but Andrew's saying here, my dream signing would be Florian Verts. The kid, I mean, he's had a bad injury this year, but boy, oh boy, he's one talented guy. Unfortunately, Andrew, I think he's going to be one of those that move on to Bayern Munich next, you know, one of those that just they just pluck him out of. The other clubs teams but yeah that that kid is sensational sensational shout as well andrew brilliant but i don't think he'll be coming to leeds um let me see who's next calvin ramsey i spoke about him before on a couple of videos ago um right back very athletic yes it's from the scottish league but as i said before there are certain players that you know could adapt from scottish league into the premier league and I do think Calvin Ramsey is one of them. Heavily, heavily linked with Liverpool, which is always an obstacle because you're looking at the club factor. And if you're learning under Jurgen Klopp and you've got a chance to play even a, like the, the games that don't matter in the group stages of the Champions League, he might just take that. But if you're offering him, if you can sell him and say, listen, Calvin, you'll be our number one right back, 38 games of Premier League football. And if you're still on the trajectory that we think you are and you want to go to Liverpool in two years, we'll, we'll, we'll see you off there. Because unfortunately, people, that's what we are right now. We are probably the, the stopgap before they go to the next big club until we can, you know, go back to those heights, hopefully one day. But so that's how you can sell it to someone like Calvin Ramsey. If he's if he's not interested in playing back up to Trent, why not come to Leeds United? It's a huge platform, huge. Um, 
another right back. I'm, I'm, I'm filling up these wing backs, slots, people. Now, Molina, Udinese, 24 year old Argentine international. Once again, he's been linked with huge clubs. But just remember when we was linked with DePaul and um, Mateus Cunha and all these guys. Yes, they went to Atletico in Madrid, but at the time they were attainable. They were. And I think now, now Molina is another one of those. Goal scorer and right back. He's got a wicked cross on him too. I would absolutely love to see him at Ellen Road. Um, hopefully some of you have heard of some of these players too. Uh, <laughs> it would be nice if other people have heard of them. But these are the kind of players that I want Leeds United to get to push us on to the next level. And Molina is, is, a, is a gem. And when you see his athleticism compared to what we've got currently, you'll see that the levels are night and day. Um, uh, Jonathan David, I mean, we were linked with Jonathan David, wasn't we, Richard? Um, but I think he's moved on to the next level now. I think Lille are looking to sell him. But I think they're looking for something like 70 or 80 million. I think he's going to, if he moves again, he'll be going to another championship club. Um, yeah, KG, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, all, all good. Darren Wong, I'd take Kamada over Minamino. Kamada's a bit old now, though, isn't he? I'm sure I'm sure he's a little bit old now. I'm not sure. John B in the in the house, scouting abilities are second to none. Ah, I like to think I know a thing or two about a thing or two. You know, one of those. <laughs> but listen, I've got to put myself out there. I've got to put the, my, the names out on the line. And if they flop, they flop. You know, I'm not, I'm not Nostradamus. I don't know everything. But it's just my opinion on ballers that I, I like the look of. And I think we, we can get at Leeds United. Is he 25? Oh, man, I thought he was older than that. Jacob Smith, let's hijack the Haaland deal. I've got my thoughts. I think Haaland's coming here when he's like 32, 33. Um, I think he's going to give us one of those kind of farewell tours. Hey, I'll take him at 32. <laughs> um, now, okay, moving into midfield, Sander Berg. Somebody I've mentioned a lot on the debrief, but again, he was he's Premier League quality people. And Sander Berg plays in both the 6, 8 and 10. He plays in three positions and he's good in all three. He has got no weaknesses. He's strong on the ball, can carry the ball. Yes, he's not the quickest, but he's got the smarts. So when you're not the quickest, you've got to have this up here. You've got to have the brain and he's got that. He wasn't looked at by um, Premier League clubs because he had a, a serious injury. Um, he had a serious injury and... You know, it was risky to take him out of there, but he's gone back to the form he was showing why Sheffield United brought him to the Prem. And for me, I think that deal would be fairly cheap. I mean, I've, I've been cheeky and thought that maybe we could throw in some players to go with it, you know, throw in for sure Tyler Roberts and a few of the others and make the deal sweeter. But I don't think Sheffield United would go for that. But for me, Sander Berg isn't... Just think if we got Sander Berg in today, how much that just upgrades our midfield straight away. It, it just upgrades us you know, 100%. And you and then you just think Calvin Phillips, he's looking at that, hmm, I wouldn't mind playing alongside Sander Berg. That would be better than playing alongside some of the players I've played with this season. So yeah, Sander Berg for me is a, a target and he's attainable um, because Sheffield United are not coming up. So we, we've got to sit, we've got to test their resolve. And I'm sure there will be other um, clubs that will be testing his, their resolve too. Uh, Bob's 89, proper ball carrier Berg looks decent. Yeah, and just think about him at set pieces too. Set pieces, he'll be a threat in the air. Tall guy. Oh, my days. Um, oh, I don't know how to say your name. I apologize. Um, but are you looking at my list here? Can you see it? Uh, but yes, Sanderberg for me would be one of the, the key targets, most definitely. And speaking of Sheffield United, um, he's not actually their player, but he was there on loan is Morgan Gibbs White, who this gentleman or lady has put on the screen here. Excellent shout, because he is on my list. Reason why? Central attacking midfielder, and Wolves are about to sign him to a new contract, right? That's fine, but if Wolves don't see him as a first-team player for them, why would they not see now if he's good enough to be on loan in the Premier League? For me, it's the, it's the next best move for him. Um, he's had a brilliant season at Sheffield United, by the way. He's been involved in nearly all their goals, whether he scored them or been a creator of the of the of the goals. And him and Sander Berg, as it happens, have a really good partnership. So let's just say we get both of those guys. We've already got an understanding in midfield there. Uh Luis, yes, he's at Wolves. He's he's and that's why I think I think he would actually be available on loan. 
because they're looking to sign him to a new deal. Uh, I think AC Milan have been looking at him, but there's there's only so many uh, players that AC Milan can recruit. I know they're the Italian champions, but I think Premier League loan move is probably his next best next be, best bet if Wolves aren't looking to play in first team. And I always liked the look of him before, but what it was when he was getting opportunities at Wolves before, because there were so few and far between, um, he was rushing his shots. He was he was um, he was panicking too much. He was snatching at efforts, but you could see all he needed was to hone his skills, hone his craft, and he's done that this season. And again, I think he can make the step up. And on loan, no risk. Static, would you go for Brownhill from Burnley? No, I wouldn't static. That's uh, that's Connor. He loves him. I don't. <laughs> he doesn't. But there are players in that kind of mold that I do want to go on to now. Um, and just Barandi's uh, comment here, we want quality coming in. We need to up our wages. Yeah, that's got, that's got to happen. Um, the outlay is going to have to be bigger in terms of money, in terms of wages. And that's why we do need to sell some players in order to, to balance that out a bit. Um, but yeah, obviously everything has to improve. It has to. Uh, Jack Wilson saying, <laughs> Jack Wilson saying, Rads has got the foreshore tweet reloaded and ready to go. <laughs> Imagine that. All, all this talk about these players and we don't get any of them, or or even close to one. That would be criminal, criminal people. Uh, the next one after Morgan Gibbs White, I've got is Czech Decore. Now, uh, him and Seko Fofana, I've, I would list them both, but it's more Czech Decore. Czech Decore is 22. Both of, the, both of those gentlemen play for Lens. But what Czech Decore does is he's a one hell of a tackler in midfield. And he gives you the running. If you love the running, he gives you that. But he's brilliant at interceptions. Uh, lazy, he's, not a, he's not a flashy ball. He plays it simple. But sometimes you only need that. Give it to you more creative players. Let them do that stuff. But he is a midfield giant. And I would absolutely love to get um, Czech, Czech Decore in there. Uh, Sam Eseko for finals mentioned in January Lens midfielder. Yeah, both of them play for both of them play for Lens, um, and and both of them. I think a lot of Premier League clubs will be looking at those too. But check the Corey for me just because of his age. Mali international, twenty two years old. Absolutely love to see him come to Leeds United. Absolutely love to. Um, Set oh same former Man City player. Yeah, for Fana. Uh, Seko Fofana was at Manchester City. That's correct. I think he was at Fulham too, but I just know him more from his lens time, um, and he's and he's been brilliant for them there. But yes, Czech Decore is the one. Russell saying, <laughs> "Let me just get that." Russell, it's like we are kids in a candy store picking all these players. It's just what it's just a wish list, Russell. Hopefully, um, hopefully we can get a couple of these or just close to these players. Because obviously, I'm not a scout. You know, that's Victor Orr and all these guys. So I'm not a scout. So it's up to them to to find these players and, and find gems. Find another Rafinha. I'd love I'd love to see that again, but we'll see. Yeah, Raj saying Seko for is really tough now. Apparently, AC Milan are interested in. Yeah, but it's about getting in before these guys, uh, Raj. And if you can get in before them and sell them a project, they'll come. Like I said at the start of the video, Kamara to Villa. No one would have ever thought Kamara was going to Aston Villa. I guarantee it. But if you if you're good enough and you can sell them enough, you can get these players. Uh, last one on the, well, last one in the midfield list for me anyway is Ruben Loftus Cheek, and I think you can probably get the get him on loan too. And if it is a, if it has to be a fee, I don't think it would be that much. People, I don't think it would. Um, let me just take a sip. Ruben Loftus Lust Sheep, uh, not so much a defensive midfielder for me. I think he's better centrally and um, pushing forward. But again, he's another one that will arrive late in the box, give you shots in the box, uh, can break up play, very athletic. He's had his injury problems, granted, but I think he's kind of getting over those now. But yeah, Ruben's left his cheek, man. I'd take him too. Yeah, Jack Wilson, left his cheek is decent. Yeah. Jacob Smith, left his cheek would be great. Drives well with the ball and has quality. He absolutely does. <laughs> hey, that's that's tremendous. Victor has just subscribed. That's tremendous. Uh 
Ben Norman from Norwich. I wasn't really a fan. I got to be honest. I'm I'm not really a I'm not really a fan of that Norman guy. I think I think he'll probably stick with Norwich as well. By the way, I think they'll probably keep him. Um, somebody was asking about. I think yeah, some, a few people have asked about McNeil. For me, no, I don't rate McNeil like that. I just don't. Uh, I know he's young and English, so that gives him more hype than necessary. But he hasn't been that good. And I'm not even just talking about in in Burnley. They, but people, you got to remember with Dwight, Dwight McNeil as well. He his form dipped that much that Aaron Lennon took his place. Aaron Lennon, people, he, no, Aaron Lennon hasn't retired. He's still playing, and he took Dwight McNeil's place. For me, that kind of tells you where he is. He scored that one super goal. It might have even been last season. But for me now, nah, McNeil, there's no there's no end product there. Nah, I, I want I want better. Charlie Brown, Ericsson for free. I would absolutely do that. But I think uh, Ericsson, he's either going to stay at Brentford as he might be thankful for them giving him another chance. But I think uh, he's got Spurs and Manchester United looking at him. So I don't think that we're going to be in that conversation. Uh, let's have a look. Yeah, Jacob, McNeil will be a downgrade. Yeah, it'd be just he'd just be another one of those... Sorry to say, Dan James, Hilda Costa kind of wingers where we just like, oh, we need more from this guy. I, I want to get out of that now. We've got too many of those players where we're like, oh, I wish we got more from this guy. Let's let's go for some quality. Uh, and just before I go into forwards, uh, just going to shout out a uh, new member of the channel, Darshan. Big up to you, man. And thank you for becoming a member of the channel. Mad Max also, thank you for becoming a member. Really appreciate that. Just supports me and supports the channel. It doesn't mean anything changes. Uh, and you can become a member by uh, clicking the link in the description. Lloyd Dean Poker with a super chat. Thank you so much, Lloyd. Um, Romeo from Southampton would be, would be a good sign of 15 million. Hmm, 15 million, that's kind of steep for him. I'm going to be honest. I think you could probably get one of the players I've mentioned for around that or maybe five or 10 million more. I would rather get the the, the, the quality there. I think uh, Romeo. I wouldn't. I wouldn't turn my nose up at it, but yeah, I think. I think there's better. Just in my personal opinion, anyway. Uh, Lloyd Dean, you didn't read my. So I just read it now, Lloyd. I just read it now. I just read it now, man. Um, but yeah, uh, so Lucas Broyer, you know, discussed him. I would. I wouldn't mind seeing him on loan. Somebody asked, "Do I respect Enketia now?" I've lost it. I can't. I can't see where that is. But uh, yeah, Enketia, not for me, man. Not for me. I, I hope that Arsenal get him to sign a new deal. <laughs> I hope so. Uh, but forwards, I don't have a long list. It's quite funny. Uh, Charlie's mentioning Ian Acho. Yeah, I mentioned Ian Acho yesterday. But it's quite funny with strikers, man. The goal, the goals from strikers that possibly be available, where are they? Once again, I'm not a I'm not a scout, so I don't know everything. But it's it's tough to find actual strikers that you think, oh, I wouldn't mind him, and it's realistic that he'd come. All of them a bit like, um, you know, Mbappe, Haaland, and even Mbappe, he's a he's a right forward. But yes, yeah, it's, it's tough to think of strikers that you want. And yes, Brozio, we've talked, we've spoken about him before on loan. If you can get him on loan from Chelsea, yes. I absolutely would. Um, Emmanuel Dennis, another one. I would take him from Watford. I think that he's in a better system, in a better team. Emmanuel Dennis just keeps scoring. And much like his countryman, Ian Natural, I would take him. The reason why I say Ian Natural, by the way, is because Leicester have got quite a few forwards there and the, the game time is a bit spread out. We could offer Ian Natural first team minutes all season long. And he, he'd be easily the most talented, gifted striker we'd have at the club easily as well um so yeah there's those two and then the last one is uh Gianluca Scamacca and he plays for Sassuolo let me just get that right he does play for Sassuolo I've said so many names I'm, I'm losing track yeah he, he plays for those guys um had a really good season strong in the air powerful shot um good decent link-up play I won't say good link-up play but he's decent but he knows where the goal is the only thing for me with, with that is he's got 16 goals this season. But I just worry, will it translate to the Premier League? I'm not sure. 
So even I'm saying with uh, Skamaka, I'm not sure if he, it will translate well to the Prem, but I'd be willing to give it a go because he looks, he's got all the attributes uh, to be a real, real good striker in the Prem. Will it work? Who knows? But yeah, Skamaka's on my list as well. So I think that's it. Yeah, that's my initial list. That that is that is my list. Uh, DB Schmacker is going to Inter Milan. Well, nothing, nothing's uh, nothing's finalized yet. Uh, Dan Savage, yes, KG it, Italian big striker, he would be class. That's what I'm thinking. I, but like I say, there's something in the back of my mind that's saying, will this be a uh, what was that guy's name? A Graziano Pele for Southampton, where it looks good on paper, but in reality, it doesn't work. I don't know, man. He's got a lot of attributes that I do like. I like him a lot. So, yeah. Just Ratcliffe with a, with a good question here. What about Samba if nuts don't go up? Yeah, real good goalkeeper. Uh, and we've spoken about Nick Pope in depth on the debrief yesterday. Um, even posed the question, would I take Nick Pope over Melier? And as good as Melier has been, and he absolutely has been brilliant for us, Nick Pope is levels above. I know he's older, but you're getting that quality. And goalkeepers age differently, don't they? You know, you're probably getting Nick Pope for another six years at his peak, easily, 36. So, yeah, I would absolutely take Nick Pope. But you mentioned Samba there, Just Samba's a quality goalkeeper. And yet again, if Forrest don't come up, I think a few other clubs will be looking at him too. Um, all in all, six signings in EKG. Yeah, I would say at least six, Scott, at least six. Deshaun, would you take Lingard? Yes, but I think Lingard's looking at a big money deal at, at this point of his career. He's looking for first-team football, of course, but I think the wages that he's looking at, you know, what is he now, 30? He's, he's 30. This is going to be one of his last uh, contracts. I think he's going to be looking at a Newcastle deal. I do. So I don't think it's realistic for us. Uh, Jeremy Wentworth, Nick Pope, Nick Pope linked with Spurs. Yeah, and I'm, I'm not surprised. He should be at a club like Spurs. I said this two years ago, though, before I had a channel and everything else like that. I said Nick Pope should be at a club like Tottenham. And, you know, people scoff at it because he's at Burnley. There's all that snobbery when people play for lower league clubs or lower, you know, reputation clubs. But people have got to start somewhere. What, what, happened, what would happen if someone took Andy Robertson besides Liverpool? You'd be getting a look at that Andy Robertson you're getting. Yes, he's not getting the club coaching, but you've got to have the quality in order to do what Robertson's done. And he had it. It was clear to see that he had it at Hull too. A lot like Jared Bowen as well when he was at, at Hull. I knew he'd make the step up and he's done that. And, and then some. I think he's going to be called up to the England squad. Uh, Hannah Lucy saying, I'd be grateful for like for like on bench. Of course, quality is key, but a change where it's not affecting the whole team formation. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. Less less adaptability and more round pegs in round holes kind of thing. I, I'm with you. I'm with you on that, on that, Hannah. Absolutely, 100%. Uh, Jack Wilson, shame we didn't get Jared Bowen. Yeah, I think we were looking for a, a loan move with view to permanent if we got promoted and, you know, whole city weren't interested in that and you can see why. Um. York Shapiro, I mean, this has come up a, a, a couple of times. Is uh, Che Adams the new mystery Premier League striker that Phil Hay talked about? I hope not. I, I do like, I think he's decent, Che Adams, but I mean, I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure about him. Not now. Uh, right, yes, one. Didn't Henderson get relegated as well when Liverpool signed him? Exactly. It, it's not like I'm saying go and get Chris Martin, you know, from Bristol City or wherever he is now. I'm not talking about getting these kind of players. I'm talking about getting players that are, that can step up and that are better than their current club. It's as simple as that. You're just going to take the snobbery out of it, people. We're not going to... I mean, listen, if you want to go there, we signed Junior Furpo from Barcelona. How are you all feeling about that one? <laughs> so, you know, just go with the quality of the player, people. That's what I would say. Um, has anyone else got any striker recommendations, actually? Yeah, that's that's my thinking as well, uh, James. Need better than Che Adams. That's it for me as well. 
Charlie Brown with another decent Forest shout. Well, we just raided nothing on Forest here. Shout out to Forest. <laughs> Would you take Joel Worrell, great centre back? He's he's very good, isn't he? Um, I can definitely see him come in Premier League unless he wants to give Forest to go uh, another season if they don't come up. But yeah, he's he's a quality centre back. But centre back, we was talking about this yesterday. Centre back is an area where I think with that damage, it, I think it's other areas that cause the centre backs to look weaker than they are because. I look at Strack and I've still got 100% belief in Pascal. He, he just lost confidence because of all the goals being shipped in and the, the shape of the team and everything else like that. It was natural, wasn't it? Uh, I think Robin Cock, I think Robin Cock would be better as an out and out starter as centre back. So I think we're okay at centre back. It's the other areas of the pitch that we need to get stronger in in order to make the centre back pairings a bit more durable and a, and a bit more stable. So, so that's my thinking with the centre back. So, unless they're going to get a centre back that's out of this world, um, and then Dicker from Frankfurt, or no, they're going Champions League now, so no chance. But you know what I mean. If they're going to go for a centre back that's out of this world and, and much better than what we've got, then by all means do it. But I also think Charlie Creswell is ready to, to to step up to first team football for Leeds United. I do. You know, you don't get teams that are looking at Charlie Creswell looking at him without him being quality. And I think he's ready to, to to step up. So I think we're doing okay in the centre back area. It's more midfield, full, definitely wing back, full backs for me that need work. Backup goalkeeper for, for Melier, or if you're going to get a Nick Pope, that supplants Melier. Um, and strikers. But um, Jesse Marsh already said that they're looking at strikers too. Ah, oh, Dan, that's a good, that's a nice one. Domenico Berardi needs a move. He would be a huge signing with score goals. Yeah, he's also at Sassuolo. Yeah, um, he's a good player too, man. I, I like him a lot. But yeah, listen, people, uh, if you're watching the replay, give me some thoughts on names that I've mentioned, if you've heard of them, obviously. And give me your suggestions too. I'm interested to hear what, what everyone else thinks. Uh, let me just, before I move on, hold on. Uh, just a couple of super chats just before I move on. Mr. P, sorry late to the party. Um, quality required all over and all signings to be better than, than what we have, i.e. Patrick, as in Bamford, Cooper, Dallas, etc. all replaceable. Yeah, I agree. Uh, with Dallas, though, what I will say, and I said it last night on the debrief, and I'll repeat it here. Dallas, I definitely do believe, should be going to the bench, absolutely. Um, but I, I don't think he should be sold. I think his versatility and quality does have in other areas of the pitch, not at fullback anymore. We've seen that this season. It's been a disaster. But I think he's useful uh, around other areas of the squad. So I'd absolutely keep Stuart Dallas on the bench. The others, I'm with you. <laughs> Lewis F with the Super Chat, thank you. Uh, Mariki from Lazio, I reckon he'd be decent from us. I don't know much about him, Lewis, so I'm not going to pretend. One thing I always say on here, if I don't know, I will tell you I don't know rather than looking like a fool. So I don't know much about him, Lewis F. The only player that I know of uh, from Lazio that I really enjoy watching and who's definitely not coming to Leeds United is Malinkovic Savic. Oh my days, what I do for that guy. Pause. But yeah, um, yeah, he's the player that I love watching uh, from Lazio. Um, but I've not heard of that striker, so I can't give a comment. But thank you for the super chat, um, Lewis. Uh, yes. Uh, on the docket next, Eddie Gray was talking about uh, Marcelo Bielsa on TalkSport this week and he just made a, a couple of comments and I, I don't want to harp on it too long but the, the only reason why I'm bringing it up is because he's, he's made it current news and that was that when things were going wrong Bielsa didn't talk to the club and when it more importantly for me when it came to signings he didn't want any signings now we also we do have to remember Eddie Gray as much of a legend he is He's very close with the club. He's very inside. So he's got this information from the board. They've passed it on to him and he's the mouthpiece of, of such. Now, I, I don't disbelieve everything he said. I think there's I think there's definitely truth to it. And I, I said it last time, but I'll say it on here. Because from the start, we always knew Bielsa wanted a small squad, right? That was the that was the message we had in the championship. We had 46 games in the champ, and he didn't care. Even when we got Ben White on loan. He'd move him up to defensive midfield when Calvin was out. When there was a gap in defence, Luke Ayling would go centre-back. Stuart Dallas would go everywhere. We know the drill. He wanted a small squad, but make them as adaptable as possible so you didn't have to have a big squad and have unhappy players. We knew that from Bielsa. That was never a secret. What I didn't like was that that 
that narrative started to change because things went bad. And all of a sudden now Bielsa wanted this player, that player, and that. I just don't believe that. Did he want better players? Probably. But we also know how loyal he was. And he was loyal to players like Mateus Click, like Luke Ayling and all the rest of them. So when I, I also believe that if Victor Orta was giving him suggestions of players that were better than Click, that Bielsa would have said, I don't think he's better than Mateus Click. I genuinely believe that too. And it was always my, my fear. I remember saying it back in December. It was always my fear about Bielsa. Does he overrate some of these players he's got? And just remember as well, when plan A doesn't work, you just try and make plan A better. So it's not out of the realm of possibility that Bielsa didn't want any more players. And we also have to consider as well, you know, Brownie made a point of that when we got rid of Eddie and Ketty or when he let, went back to Arsenal, we got in uh, Augustine. We did. But this season, we've used Dan James as a striker more than anything. And I do think that Bielsa just used him as a striker instead of thinking we need to get another one. And then if in case of real emergency, even though he should have been used more, Gil Hart's there as well. And then if you need him, Sam Greenwood. So... The, the whole the whole thing about Bielsa not wanting players, I don't think is true. I, I think he would have said yes to a couple of players because we saw that when Dan James, listen, Ronaldo signed for Man U and the next day Dan James was, he was basically on his way to Leeds. So if Bielsa really wanted them, the board did say, okay, we'll, we'll go and do that for you then. There's truth in, in the middle, I think, with, with this thing. But what, what, what has been funny is, and, and I don't want to, make it a Bielsa thing, but it's where people are trying to all of a sudden say now we, we didn't help, the board didn't help Bielsa enough. You have to remember the man that he was. He was very, very stubborn in his ways. He wouldn't change tactics. He wouldn't change training for players, even though they were, they were asking for it. And did the board offer him players and he said no? I, I definitely believe that. Yeah. I can believe that. So I don't think Eddie's wrong, but he's definitely speaking from a club bias way. But it's on both of them because I still say it, and I said it at the time, if there's players to be gotten, get them. Go over his head, and if he doesn't like it, we'll deal with the consequences then. We'll just deal with it then because even though in the middle of January, we were begging for players. You know, that, that FA Cup match reaction I had, there's two minutes on the game, and the rest of it is saying, where the hell's the players? But at that time, they were looking to probably get rid of Bielsa and get in Marsh. There was a whole lot of things going on behind the scenes at that point. So it's just interesting in, in terms of Eddie's com uh, comments um, and, and just stirring that whole thing back up. But I just think that there's truth in, in, in everything. But I just believe as well, Bielsa had his principles. He was loyal to his players. And unless he really thought that the player that Victor was, was suggesting was better than what he had, he wasn't interested. Um, Paul Gray saying, honestly, uh, I believe Bielsa overrated a lot of these players. I do too. Bandy, who is a, a big Bielsa guy, so I, I was ready for this, Bandy. It makes perfect sense to blame the dead guy. He's not dead. Did you hear the, those shouts of sack the board? Yeah, yeah, I heard them, Bandy. I mean, I, I was there at the ground, but, you know, the sack the board comments came in game 37. <laughs> They, they weren't there all season, though, Bandy, um, apart from that little kerfuffle at the home Brentford game. But yeah, I, I, but Bandy, no, I'm not blaming him. Everyone's got blamed for how the season went, and, and that's pretty obvious from the board, Bielsa, and everything else. Um, but it's, it's just rewriting what we always knew and what was working for three years. All of a sudden, it doesn't work for half a year, and then the whole narrative changes. I, I, just, don't, I just don't buy that. And Jack Wilson, yeah, Ed, Eddie is a mouthpiece for the club, as was Larimer. He was. He, he was a mouthpiece as well. But, yeah, I just thought it was um, interesting. And, yeah, yeah, Liam, I know, Bandy's very he's very emotional when it comes to Bielsa, like, like a few people, but blaming the dead guy. Yeah, he's not dead. And and it's like somebody said, and just to cap this off, it, uh, somebody made a great point that they're glad we didn't go down so it tarnished Bielsa's legacy. And I'm I'm with that. I'm with that because, yes, if we had gone down, a big portion of blame would have been on Bielsa for tactics and team selections, Tyler Roberts and everything else like that. But the fact we survived, he's part of that. We survived a second year, and that's because of what Bielsa helped up to the point of his departure. Um, 
So whatever happens after this now doesn't go on Bielsa. He did his job and he's part of the, 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 the second year in the Prem and we've survived. So that I think it's I think it's ideally again in a perfect world he'd have been here till the end of the season we would have survived comfortably but it wasn't a perfect world and things changed after January didn't it whether the board thought that he was the right man to take us forward at the time they probably did uh, even though they were talking to Jesse Marsh but then February came and the beatings came the absolute beatings like we were taking um just came and, and changed what they needed to do. Like Jesse Marsh said, he didn't want to come until the end of the season. You could see why he wanted to work with new players and everything else. So, but yeah, hopefully that's the last we have to talk about that and, and everything else uh, in, in regards to Bielsa. Unless somebody comes out like Victor Orton and gives you like an in-depth interview, it's just best now to just move on now. Like I've done at the start of this video with players that we need moving forward. Right, so 45 minutes in. Um, let me just take another sip, people. Right. Uh, Lewis, Keiji, would you work at Leeds as a scout? <laughs> That's funny, man. That's funny. Uh, Mohamed Smith, uh, KG, thoughts on Lewis O'Brien? I mean, uh, yeah, again, for me, the, the players I've mentioned are better than Lewis O'Brien, Mohamed, easily as well, in every sense of football and ability, football brain, talent, agility, uh, athleticism, all better than Lewis O'Brien. And listen, Lewis O'Brien may stay at Huddersfield if they go up. So um, it's going to be interesting to see what happens there. Uh, with, with some of the players that have been linked with Premier League moves. But listen, people, I'm going to do something on here now. And, and listen, there's over 400 of you here on 3 o'clock in the afternoon British time. Please hit a like on the button um, on the video. And if you're watching the replay, please hit the like button also. But I'm going to do player ratings now, but for the season. And, and the reason why I'm interested in this is because I've watched a few player ratings videos today. And there was one, I'm not going to name the, the club who got relegated, but they gave six of their players seven out of ten over the season, but the club got relegated. Now, <laughs> I mean, that just sounds a bit weird to me. And I also know how passionate some of you guys are about a lot of the promoted squad. So this isn't really going to be my ratings. I will give my rating for the player overall. But this is going to be more for you guys. I want to hear your ratings for the, for the players on the season overall and i'm not going to be doing players like charlie creswell or lewis bay because they haven't had enough game time yelder as well and when you really think about it, joel gilhart just makes the cut just makes the cut from the minutes and, and games that he's played this season he just about makes it but it's going to be your, your main hitters so there's going to be no no players that like like creswell or bay because it's it's not enough for me it's not a big enough sample size because i could easily say for uh, creswell He's looked more more than impressive, um, so he could get an eight. But that's not really fair, is it? Because we don't know over a sustained period of time. Uh, just before I get into it, uh, another super chat. Michael Edison, thank you for the support, buddy. Uh, thoughts on Charles de, de Ketelier from Club Bruges? Well, as you can tell from the way I've just pronounced it, I don't know who he is, Michael. Sorry about that. I can't help you. I can't help you on that one. Like I say, people, I'll never pretend if I don't know him. I won't say so. I can't really say I've, I've heard of him, Michael. But um, thank you for the super chat, my man. Um, but yeah, listen, people, let's get into it. Player ratings for the season. I'm interested. And if you're watching the replay, give me your player ratings in the comments too. Elan Melier, overall. So yeah, we start with Elan Melier. Out of 10, it's out of 10. This is a, 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 what is it called? A Dave Meltzer five-star system? No, we're doing out of 10. For me, for the amount of pressure the, the guy's been under this season, uh, no mentor, no senior mentor behind him, the amount of shots he's had to face, it's, it's a tough one, you know. Jacob, six. Kyle with a 6.5, coming in with the 0.5s. So I'm just going to be doing solid numbers here. Rusko, 8. Bandy, 9. 
Mark also with a nine. Whoa, hey, <laughs> these are some high numbers. This, this is why it's it's interesting to get it on a season basis, man. Dwex with a four. Is this Brownie's burner? Let me know. <laughs> Deshaun seven. I'm oh, sorry, it's gone up Deshaun, but Desha uh, Deshaun seven. Kyle seven. Melier six. Only as good as the players in front of him. See, I don't. I, I see. I, I I understand that to a point, Dale. But then I look at again. We talk about him again. I'm, I might I might just be his agent and Nick Pope. But you look at Nick Pope, and he's a for the season. You probably give Nick Pope a nine. I would say the amount of games and points he saved Burnley. But listen, Melier did that for us this season. His confidence definitely dropped from I would say January, late January onwards. It was pretty much the whole team's confidence drop. For me, yeah, I mean, I'm going with six. I'm going with a six, too. I think a lot of people are saying six. Seven would be would be decent as well. I just feel like for some of the goals as well that we've conceded, especially some of the free kicks, they were preventable. Uh, his distribution hasn't been good this year. That's not on him, too. I think he should be just rolling it out and letting the outfield players go. But as we've seen many times over the year, the defenders usually pass it back to Melier. So I would say six for myself overall, but I'm not mad at a seven. Um, I think that I think that would be fair too, but I would say six. Clarkson, obviously not going to rate him for one sub appearance versus Wolves. So we'll move on to Luke Ayling. Give me your thoughts on Luke Ayling's. Uh, give me a number from one to 10 for Luke Ayling, people. Now, for me, I'm just going to say this. I don't think Luke Gaming's had a good season at all. And the, th the fact that I keep going back to the one game against Crystal Palace where he battled well with Zaha kind of tells a story for me. So for me, I can't give Luke Ayling anything better than a four. Now, see, people will probably think I'm harsh, but it's just my standards, people. My standards of what I want from a Premier League player. And I think four for the, for the, the heart he's shown, uh, some of the leadership he's shown as well in terms of getting in the referee's ear. I think I would, that bumps him up to a four, but man, the giveaways, the, the lack of threat down the right-hand side for me, chasing shadows as someone put there, it's gone up. Sorry, Sam, four for me. <laughs> Martin Peters, that is harsh. Bandy puts seven. Bandy loves these guys, man. Bandy, I, I love your passion for these players. I really do. Deshaun, four. Liam, five. Um, Jay Hen, uh, people call me harsh. So three, definitely four on attack. Frankie saying three. <laughs> Mad Max, he can leave for me. Well, he's had a he's had surgery. Max, he's staying. He ain't going nowhere. <laughs> uh, Kata saying Ailing gets a five. Danny Keys five on work rate alone. You know what? I want to I want to get a tweet about that as well. Um, and it's from the uh, True Geordie people actually. Because it's a brilliant point. True Geordie. I just want to say this as well. This is from True Geordie's Twitter account. The minute you say a player tries hard as their main quality is when you know they're bad. I'll rephrase it. There's lots of us living our... These lots are living our dreams. Trying hard is the bare minimum. We would all try hard. Doesn't mean we belong in the team. Couldn't put it any better. I've said that. I've said things along those lines all season long. Hard work should be the bare minimum. That's why when I see Adam Forshaw's um, heat map, like Shania Twain, that don't impress me much. Where's the quality that goes with all the running? So that's why I say, that's what I say about things like that. And True Jordy put it very, very well. But yes, yeah, getting your, your yeah, Aileen, we'll, we'll move on now. Um yeah, let's go with that. Let's go with that other fullback in uh, Junior Furpo, people. Junior Furpo. Now, uh, be, be kind, people. Be kind. <laughs> Actually, no, don't be kind. Give me what you give me what you really believe, Junior Furpo. <laughs> yeah, you guys love these guys. Huh? It's funny. It's just funny how defensive some people get of. The promoted players. I, 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 I'm at this point. I'm finding it hilarious considering where we've just finished. Uh, so Furpo got threes. We got fours. Someone had a six, I think, as well. He's only had three good games. That's probably fair. Liam with a three. Jeremy four. He's improved lately. 
Yeah, four pro for me, I'm going to say if I'm giving Luke Ayling a four, I'm going to have to match him. Um, and that's just because I think going forward, he's possibly better than Luke Ayling. But defensively, man, he's got to stop holding on to these to the opposition like the, the prom dates. You know, he can't get away with that in the prem. One thing as well with Junior Furpo is I think he's going to be here next season. So hopefully it's the one of those things where he's just having to adjust and we get something better in the second year. But yeah, for me, it can't be any anything bigger than a four. Uh yeah, let's move on to the center backs. Uh, so we look, Jay Patel, KG, forget as the face of Man United. What do you think of Sir Alex Ferguson as a manager? He always says new signings in the first season are right off. Well, not all of them. You know, Rafinha didn't need a season to settle in. Um, but what do I think of him as a manager? I, I wish my club had the success that he got. <laughs> That's it. I used, to, I used to hate how you guys want everything. But I guess as you get older, you're just like, man, you can appreciate the, the success that they had. That's kind of how I feel about him. Um. Yeah, Matt Davis, I mean, this is a good point. Technically, you can see a player in Furpo, but positionally and defensively awful. Yeah, we've got to see what he's going to give us in the second year because I don't think he's going anywhere, people. I really don't. And his message on Twitter and uh, IG probably says he's going to be here next season. Let's see what he's about next year. Uh, but obviously, I hope that we do get in another left back to be first choice. All right, Robin Cock. I mean, Robin, this is, see, this is kind of unfair. Robin Cup because when we've seen him, he's usually been put out in in defensive midfield, and that's not his spot. It's not his spot. He's a he's a centre back. It's hard to judge with Robin Cup. You know what? For me, I'm going to say with Robin Cup, I'm going to give him a five, and it's not that I want him gone. I actually want Robin Cup to stay, but I just don't think we saw enough of him in the centre back position. And for me, that that kind of affects the rating. Uh, I think he would have been higher than a five if he, if he had played continuously at centre-back. But the five is just because I haven't seen the best of him in his position. Uh, Liam B, cut five at five or six, yeah. Uh, Lyle saying seven or eight at centre-back, but five for DM. Yeah, exactly. It just, it just brings the rating down. Nigel saying five. Dunny, seven, I rate him highly. I do. I like Robin Cuck a lot. I do. I absolutely do. And yes, Darren, it's not his fault. It really isn't his fault. This five isn't his fault. It's not like he's performed badly or anything else like that. He's just been ineffective because he hasn't been put in his correct positions. So, yeah, five seems to be the general consensus. Yeah, that seems to be a, a, a fair one. But like I say, get your get your ratings in in the comments. Uh, Diego Urente. Woo! Now, this is going to be a divisive one. Because for me, Diego Llorente, yeah, on the ball, super. Not super, no, no. Don't do that. Don't do that, Kate. Don't do that. He's good on the ball and can spot a pass. Obviously, the options have been very limited this year in terms of going forward. Llorente, though, when his confidence is low, and we've seen that in the last few months, he's a little bit all over the shop. And for someone who's, what, 28 years old, you expect a little bit more composure from that. But Yorente, see, I'm going to give him a 5-2. See, it's, it's the same rating as Robin Cuck, even though I think Cuck has been more assured. But just overall, I think a 5, I think 5 is pretty generous overall for the season. Alison Marty Adams, 5 Bandy with a five. Pedrino saying seven. Alexander didn't give a rain, but he said liability, right? Uh, Danny saying a four. Uh, Urente six. Uh, can be a liability, but that is that on the season? Exactly. I think it's a, I think the lack of confidence is on the season. I do. Um, but then he's, he scored a few goals for us as well. Ah, oh, man. Five. You know what? I'm going to bump him up to six. I don't know. Yeah, I'm bumping him up to six. My personal one, I'm going to say six. Just just on the basis that he has popped up with a few goals. 
Look at that bar. Man. Let me just get the bar, man. It's on the floor, people. Just you're trying to lift the bar up, people. I'm just this awful. <laughs> oh Lord. Oh Lord, man. I need this bar to get higher. Right. Uh Pascal. Pascal Strauch. Uh get your get your ratings in for Pascal Strauch, people. Now, Pascal, for me, is the future uh, in terms of in terms of centre back. If anyone suffered a huge loss of confidence, it was Pascal, and even I could see that his passing had completely left him. He was getting beat very easily, which is unlike Pascal as well. Um, so that that kind of goes against him in the in the last couple of months of the year. Uh, let's have a look at some of your scores for Pascal. Five. Oh, three. Overrated. No. But I appreciate your opinion, man. Uh, Strauch, seven. Uh, best centre back. Yeah, for me, he's, 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 my, he's my best one too, along with Robin Kaka at this point. Uh, ben saying four or five. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, Matt saying Pascal, six. Yeah, confidence it is. It is Bandy with a six as well. Let's get that one. Ah, oh, Luis Viva, Pascal nine <laughs> all day. Wow. Now that's very generous. Uh Pascal seven. Yeah, overall this season, I'm gonna I'm gonna stick him alongside Urente with a six. Um, and that's purely because I thought he was good, he was much better near the start. Sorry, start of the season. Um, and it's just the last couple of months where his, his confidence had, had gone down to the floor. But you even saw in the Brighton game, listen, he stepped up for us big in that game. Obviously, that doesn't affect your overall rating, but he came up big. Uh, and that's why, I, that's why I expect more from Pascal going forward, being a threat at set pieces, because he's got all the tools. He's got all the attributes to do it. So for me, I expect more. And he's still probably my number number one centre-back along with Robin Cup. So, yeah, but overall for the season, have to rate it fairly. And even though he's my favourite, one of my favourites, has got to be a six. Uh, uh, lots of sevens. I'm, I'm not doubting that. But the nine, nine, that was well generous. Okay. All right, now. Liam Cooper, people. Here we go. Lewis, I've seen you, your score, so I'm just going to put it here now. So, there you go. Lewis, he's got one for a Cooper. I'm not going to go that low. Um, Liam Cooper was out for a few months, but in the games he's played and the game was, Max said, I need a super mark. My judgment is out. <laughs> this is tremendous. This is a lot of fun. <laughs> but yes, Cooper. Cooper for me, aerially, is, is brilliant. He is, when he's not holding on to people around their necks, he's good in the air. And against the lesser opposition, He's fine. He is. He's fine against the lesser opposition. We've seen it. But when it comes to the big games, and I mean, even in the game against Brighton, and then the, the game, the last game against Brentford, oh, he, he, he was he was a horror show on the floor. He was. And for all those invisible attributes, all that you guys gave him while he was out injured, listen, when you when you see him playing, you see the real Liam Cooper, I'm afraid. And also, I mean, I mean, some people suggested that he may have missed a couple of the big games on purpose. I, I, I say no names, don't shoot the messenger. Yeah, Tom. It is, Tom, the bar is low. It is low, but this is what we got to work with, Tom. I'm sorry. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get you, you, your scores in now for Cooper, people. Let, let's go. Let's go. Richard saying a four for Cooper. Uh, I mean, this isn't a score, but Pedrino saying Cooper has been a great servant. He has, but please not in the strongest starting eleven next season. No, he, he doesn't touch the starting lineup. He doesn't. Doesn't, man. Uh, Kyle saying seven for Cooper. Uh, ben saying six. Uh, another Kyle is saying six for what he brought down the stretch area. Yet in the air, I've got no qualms against Cooper. That's one of his biggest strengths for me in the air defensively um but on the floor and when he's up against a more intelligent forward it, it it's it's a wrap people it's a wrap 
Cooper six done well in the games where he comes back, where he came back in. I'd agree with that as well. He did all right, yeah. Cooper five. <laughs> James, high standards in the red light district. Tremendous. Tremendous. Oh, man. Man, player ratings is pretty fun. I'm not going to do this often, but wow. This is quality. Um, five, yeah. Uh, crumble so easy. And Clive with a seven. So it, it it's a very mixed, isn't it? It's very mixed. And it, and there's a lot of this as well. Kyle saying he changed our fortunes defensively once he, he was back. Opinions, opinions, people. I'm going to say for Cooper myself, uh, I'm going to say five. I'm going to say five, and I think that's pretty good. I think people probably thought I would have said maybe two or three, but just being fair overall, he hasn't he hasn't been bad. He hasn't been bad, but it's just that you know when he's up against a tricky customer, it's a long it's a long day for Cooper, uh, and that's 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 what I would say on that. Uh, but as I say, disagree. Put it in the comments below. Right? Why is Lawrence the Buck on this list? How is he still here? What? Tremendous. Right, so now moving on to midfield. Uh, another one that's probably going to be in this Cooper round is Adam Forshaw. So 1 to 10, Adam Forshaw, people. How do you feel he's fared overall when, you, when you've seen him this season? Caspadino, no way Cooper's been worse than Lorraine. Opinions, opinions. But well, we're moving on now. Adam Forshaw. D Wex two, Jesus wet. Wow, five. JN said who? Uh, Luke six, Jeremy six, Terry with a four, Mark Adam three adds nothing at all. Can't argue with that. Matt Davis for sure the master of crab football gets a six. Caspadino five distance covered merchant. Yeah, for me, I, I, I'm just going to keep it real with you in terms of, yeah, I mean, Jacob, this is it. Jacob, you've taken it. I'm going to say four. Uh, and that's purely for the, for the again, we're talking work rate here. That's poor. That's poor when you're talking about that. Four, just for the effort that he gives on the pitch. But there's just zero quality there, people. And I mean zero. The passing, he doesn't do it. We saw so many times this season where he could have passed forward. He passes it back. Um, he runs around a lot, okay, but there's just no quality on the ball there. Not looking for goals or assists, so it doesn't come down to numbers because you're not expecting that from Adam Forshaw. But it's just it's, there's just nothing there. I like it's hard to describe. For me, he's a championship baller. He should be in the championship, and and no one would be surprised if he was transferred to a championship team. Um. So so for me. I can't give him any more than a four. And, I'm, and, I, and I feel like I'm being generous with a four. I'm probably going to get mad with myself once this video is done and say, why did I give that guy a four? But yeah. Yeah, Sam, I mean, listen, doesn't defend, doesn't score, doesn't assist, does nothing. Can't put it any more perfect than that, Sam. Shout out to you. Stuart Dallas. Stuart Dallas, yes, absolutely. Stuart Dallas. Um Yes, he's played more at fullback this year, but he's listed as a midfielder in the list, so we'll, we'll go with Stuart Dallas. For me, he hasn't been great this season, but I think that's not his fault. I think he shouldn't be asked to play at wing backs this year. It clearly hasn't worked, whether he's been on the left or right, and he's looked much better when he's played further up the pitch. But we, got, we have to give him a, a rating overall for the season. So, people, Stuart Dallas, let's go. Uh, Jay saying Dallas 5-2, mediocre season. Yeah, I would say that too. Uh, Leonard saying a six. Good fella, Clay. Dallas six at best. Caspadino seven. Whoa. Irish, Irish assassin, eight last season, five this season. Okay. Dallas is a rock. Seven all day long and twice on Sunday. Yeah, there's a lot of six. Uh, somebody just said they're four, but the team hasn't helped him. I, I completely agree. Completely agree. Um, but what I, I've got to go uh, on, on what I've seen this season. And 
you know, we, we talk, somebody said there in eight last season, he was he was scoring goals. He was doing all of that last year. He was, he was tremendous, wasn't he? Easily our player of the season. Well, Rafinha could be in that conversation, but he he was amazing last year. This year hasn't been good. He's been, he's been easily beaten at fullback many, many times, both on his left and his right. And I think it culminated with that season and the injury. I think that just kind of put the full stop on it altogether in that he couldn't handle Jack Grealish. He was going in crazy and he got himself a, an unfortunate injury. And I hope he comes back as soon as possible. Um, six, six or seven. I, I've got to go with a five. And, and that hurts me because I, I do like Stuart Dallas. And I still think he should be here, at least on the bench. So the, again, this is a five I'm giving him, but it's for the season. It's not what I think he's capable of doing going forward. I don't think he's finished at all. I just think that his minutes and everything else should be reduced as we get better, as the team gets better. But yeah, for me, it's a five with Stuart Dallas. But again, I know there's a lot of Stuart Dallas fans who will disagree with that. Mad Max is saying, we finished 17th peep, so no one is getting more than a seven. No secret who that is. Yeah, yeah. But, but see, Mad, Mad Max, uh, brilliant name, by the way. Um, that's what I'm talking about. When I was watching this uh, player ratings with players that have been relegated, and they were giving their players like six or seven of them over a seven. It blew my mind. That's why it's it's pretty cool getting uh, you guys' ratings right now and obviously after the video's finished. Uh, Calvin Phillips, it's, a, it's it, I mean, has he he's played enough, I guess. Has he played enough? I guess he's played enough. Calvin Phillips overall this season. Um, listen, I'm, I'm one of Calvin's biggest supporters. Absolutely love the guy. And I'm, and I'm one of those where I do say when he's not in the team, we definitely notice it. And I think that's facts. But it's it's been pretty underwhelming, let, let's be fair. So for overall, I'm going to say a five for Calvin. I can't, I can't do any higher than a five. So what's everyone saying? Mr. P, five. Okay, yeah. Tony, five. Uh, six, injured too much. Okay. Good, good filler clay four, and see, I kind of understand that as well. I do get it. I just know that with him being back in midfield, we haven't been ran through like we're not there anymore. Not as much anyway. He's much better in the team. It's just that on the ball, he hasn't been able to do as much. But then that could be a system issue and a quality issue. No, it is a system issue and quality issue. But we have to judge it on the season that we've seen. De saying a seven for Calvin. Okay. Oh, UFC fan is saying six is being nice. Nathan Palmer with a five. Danny, uh, that's gone up. Um, he said four, but can't remember any standout games. Harmony, KP has had some poor games. Harmony, I'm looking forward to your Dan James one. Don't do it yet, though. Don't do it yet. Don't go anywhere yet. Um, yeah, Scooby saying five, not to use your brilliance, but no outboard hurts him. It does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Um... Right. I'm not going to do Jamie Shackleton. Um, again, we haven't seen enough of him. I know he had a little run at right back when uh, Luke Kaling was out early in the season, but I don't think it's enough. Next on the board is Mateus Click. Right, people, Mateus Click. What are we saying? Um... Ben, Ben, you're, you see, I thought I was going to be harsh at ratings. Ben, Ben's absolutely killed it in this one. DUX one, Ricky Isle one, uh, four, sorry, Mohammed four, Alison and Marty Adams four, Lee Marshall three, Kyle four, Scott Lightning with a four, Scooby said he's still God, uh, Alfonso four, two lightweight for the Prem. Yeah, listen. Yeah, I, I'm going to be honest with with this one here. I'm giving Cal, uh, Calvin. I'm giving Mateus Click a two. Two. Sorry. Reasons. I'll always give my reasons. You can't just give a bad rating and and say and then say nothing else. Reason I'm saying it is he is allegedly a more attacking midfielder, and there's been zero output. Zero. Why has he got two assists all season? Sorry, that's not good enough. 
when he's been in midfield as well, he may as well have not been there, in all honesty. At least with Forshaw, you get that that excited puppy dog running around the place. But with Mateus Click, apart from a couple of touches, and I mean, this is when you're talking, like, on the floor. A couple of touches here and there doesn't equate a good season for me. So a two. A two. No goals, and he's an attacking midfielder. He's shooting. He, my my bait. Listen, there's babies that hit the ball harder than Mateus Click when it comes to shooting. And when he does put power on it, it goes over the bar. Except for that one against Brighton where it was on target. I mean, this, listen to what I'm having to do. But yes, two. Uh, yeah, Mad Max missing easy passes. So much of that as well. So much of that. Um, listen, you guys just behave yourselves. I, I can see what you're asking in the in the chat. We're not doing that here. That's not my story to tell. <laughs> That's not my story to tell people. Uh, Pete with a super chat. Thank you so much, Pete. Here's your tenor kid. I know Connor won't honor his debts. <laughs> oh, did you send the, the was that the 31 to split between the three? Now nah, Connor, Connor's tight, man. He ain't giving us nothing. So, but no, I appreciate that, Pete. Thank you so much, man. Thank you. Um uh, Mark Fossey saying, I wouldn't get rid of too many of our players for the sake of squad depth, but I think it's time Click moved on. Yeah, we absolutely, I mean, look, in an ideal world, I'd probably bin off most of these guys, but we know we're going to have to keep some, but it, that's the important bit, Mark. You've got it. Some will have to stay here for, for depth, bench, cup games, absolutely, but some do have to be moved on, and he's one of them. Definitely, he's one of them that has to go. Um, so, yeah, Mateus Click is done, too, for me. Uh, who's next on the list? Jack Harrison. It's going to be an interesting one. Jack Harrison. I do like Jack. People know, I, I, if you've been a long-term subscriber, I, I do like Jack Harrison a lot. I do think he can go missing sometimes in games when it's not going for us. Sometimes he does need to get his head up. But listen, as we, as we stay here right now, he scored our first goal back in the Prem, and he's currently scored our last goal in the Prem so far. You know, he's got a nice little book in then, Jack Harrison. But is you know what? His numbers will tell you he's decent as well. Um, but it's just the consistency. He gets them in chunks, doesn't he? And then he goes quiet for like eight games. But I like his effort. And I, but I, and I do think it's worth exploring. If we can't get in another left wing back, putting him back in left wing back and seeing what he can do there. I think that would probably be the best thing rather than relying on him to keep on crossing and, and getting past players because, you know, his dribbling skills aren't the best. His first touch is, is great, but he rarely gets past the player and he usually checks back inside and everything else like that. But I do like Jack Harrison, I do. And it's no secret, listen, people still laugh at it, but Spurs were looking at him. I don't know if they still are now, but they're, they are admirers of Jack Harrison. But yeah, there's been a lot of sevens here. Uh, Harmony with a five, Liam with a seven, scored some important goals. Yeah, he absolutely did. Uh, creative saying Samurai for the seven. Yorkshire Pillow, 7.5. Danny Key, six, but I think we could get a nine out of him one season. Bandy saying Harrison, eight. Jack Wilson raises his head to the sky. <laughs> you know, everyone knows that, though, people. Any, you know, Jack Harrison takes a shot, goes over the bar, and then you get... You get the old look up to the sky. Lyle, confidence player. He's absolutely a confidence player. He is more so than a lot of the players here. Uh, Dan Savage is saying Newcastle is sniffing around Jack too. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me. I've seen it, but I don't disbelieve it either. So, yeah, uh, Carl here with an eight for Harrison. Okay, right, right, right. Uh, Scooby saying no Pat, learning juniors, uh, teaching junior, so five bit below for him. But understandable. Yeah. A few of you saying um, that Newcastle are in for Jack Harrison. That would be interesting to monitor. <laughs> James. Jack, who, who is still trying to figure out what a cloud is. You guys are tremendous. Tremendous. Lewis, only one with a hat trick. Yeah, he done that. He definitely did that. That's what I'm saying. It's all in bunches, though. It's all in one, two, three games. And then you'll get a, a portion of games where there's nothing there. But, yeah. For me, did I give my rating? I don't think I did. For Harrison, I'm going to give him 
I'm going to give him a six. But if I give Pascal a six, you know what? I'm going to lean into a seven. Oh, no. No, no, no. I'm going to have to go with the points. 6.5. 6.5. I'm going to give Jack Harrison a 6.5, people. Uh, consistency, I wish it was there a bit more. And maybe we'll get that next year. Um, but I think there's so much more to, for Jack to give. I do. I really do believe that as well. So, yeah, 6.5. I'm going to give him that. Uh, Somerville can't rate him. Uh, oh, here we go. Uh, Harmony, if you're here, if you're here, get ready. Dan James, people. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this. I know I broke my own rules. I did. I did. <laughs> Listen, my channel, my rules. I broke them. What can I say? Leave me, leave me, leave me. Dan James is an interesting one. Wow, look at look at these scores here. Ben ain't rating no one. Ben, ben don't care about none of these players, man. <laughs> Chris, three. Mohammed, 4.5. James uh, himself with a four. Not Dan James himself. Someone called James, four. Jack Simpson, two. Stuart, four. Five for Gavin. Mark with a three. Mr. P with a four. Five, Jeremy, he does try. Right. Now, listen, we have to bear in mind, a lot of the season, he hasn't been helped out with both coaches, both of them, Bielsa and Marsh, playing him as a goddamn striker. In no world, no world is Dan James a striker. He's not. But at the same time, let's go for his performances out on wing. And yes, he was the one that was pressing the most. He was. But that's because he was the freshest person in the squad in terms of not doing this for three, four years. He wasn't an aging body. So he just looked faster. Well, he is faster than most. But he just looked fresher than a lot of the other players because he is. But for me, it's about output. It's about that that final ball. And it's still iffy. I thought, when it, when, it, when we signed him, I said, I thought Bielsa could hone that in Dan James, get the final ball in there, make the passes right. But so many times you've seen it, haven't you, where there'd be an easy pass, an easy ball across the box, and he doesn't even do that. Uh, for all his endeavour, all his pace, all his, his work rate, the quality isn't there. And and he's one where I would think, is he going to be here next season? It's going to be interesting. Uh, Lewis is saying, man, you scammed us. Listen, man, you got what they wanted out of him in terms of selling to Leeds. I said it at the time. I don't think if Leicester go in for Dan James at that point, I think Leicester get in for 10, 15 million pounds. I really do. But we're allegedly, we're, we're historical rivals with Man U. So they milked us. They got every penny. Just as we would if we, sell, say, sold Calvin Phillips to them. Calvin Phillips would probably go to Man City for, let's just say, 50 million. But if Man United really wanted him, we'd probably say 70, 75 to Man United. It's just the way it is. Um, so, yeah, we definitely overpaid on, on that deal. I mean, th there's no doubt about that. But for me, and, and again, it's a, it's, a, it's a chasm of the season and, and just how poor it's been overall. But for all the endeavour and, and good play, I, I can't give Dan James any more than a a five. And maybe I'm even being generous with a five. But I just think that when it comes to, he, he has scored a few goals and he's been creative in, in areas where maybe if there was a striker there, they would have finished him off. We also have to put take that into account. But I would say five, and that's just for his endeavour and, and pressing and winning the ball back at times. And for that, and for and for that S Housery in him, where he's leaving it on a player or trying to knock into the goalie. I like that kind of stuff. Call me uh call me um whatever you like. Well, not whatever you like. Dan, you were being very nice there. Yeah, I I know, and Rusko, I get it, headless chicken, yeah. Yeah, you know what? Four goals, what am I doing? What am I doing? Guys, I take it back. I'm, I'm gonna give him a. I'm gonna give him a four. I'm gonna go with a four, and I'll and I'll sleep better with that. I'd, I'd, yeah, four, four. Yes, yes, yes. D Wex nine. He's amazing at sprinting. Yeah. 
<laughs> yes, um, yes. You listen, you, you're right. It's, it's my own my own phrase as well. Uh, no more runners, precisely. Sea Stone KG likes those Brad Marshad settings. I do, I do, I do. Sea Stone, and for anyone that doesn't know, Brad Marshan is a is a ice hockey player that does questionable stuff on the ice at times, but. To be fair to Brad, he's a brilliant player, but he goes around licking players on the face, calling them names, etc. Very, very. Uh, lo- I, I do. I love that kind of stuff in sports, though. So, uh, and and just not to pile on Dan James. Uh, James says that James has the fight and win mentality, right? Well, we'll see what happens with him come the come the summer. But yeah, Mohammed Noah Lang. When this again, and we have to we have to call this out. This is a great show, by the way. We, we're going long here. You know, it was said that Noah Lang was a choice for Bielsa, but Bielsa didn't like Noah Lang's defensive capabilities. So that's why he was insistent on Dan James. And when you look at that decision now, woo, it stinks. It stinks because we're not getting Noah Lang no more. We, we, we're just not. So, um, listen, we everyone makes mistakes, but wow, Noah Lang, Dan James, there's no comparison when it comes to a ball player, but... Hey, we move people. So, oh, oh, no, no, no. I can't, I can't leave Dan James without Harmony's comment, people. Sorry. Hold on. Because Harmony was not on board with this one at all from the start. So Harmony said, Dan James, minus one for every pound wasted on him. So minus 27 million. <laughs> Terrible signing. If Histon offer 70, 67 pence and a half of Twix, bite their hands off. It's a positive. Tremendous Harmony. I'm not going to argue with any of that. Tremendous. Right, we're coming to the end because, as you know, we don't have many players, people, so bear with bear with me. Not doing Lewis Bay. Huh. 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 Oh, boy. Not, uh, and I'm not going to do Sam Green with Evo because, again, not, not, not a big enough sample size. You know what? Let's go, let's go Joe Gilhart next. Let's go Joe, Ger- Joe Gerhardt, uh, next people. Play ratings out of 10 for Joe Gerhardt. Uh, Gavin Parry there saying, Orr has made 700 plus mistakes. Yeah, he has. Joe Gerhardt rating people, eights, I like in the look of this. d come on now. A good championship player, come on. Come on, d Wicks. Come on now. Terry with an eight. Jack Wilson. Uh, oh, Mystic with a with an eight. Sorry. Yeah. Mad Max with a six. Tom Gatlin with a seven. Mark Fuss, eight. Massive career ahead of him. And I, I understand this one too, Tony. Five, but not used nearly enough. Now I'm gonna go with a seven, right? Sim- simply being because in the games that he's shown us in the in the in the minutes he's given us, for me he's been superb. He's been good to superb. He has. He's been effective. He's been everything you want in a forward player. He can dribble with the ball, keep the ball, and he shoots the thing. That's been the, that's been the thing for me. He shoots the ball, and I, I honestly believe if we had give this this kid more time, and he's not just a kid. He's, he's twenty years old now. If we had given him more game time this year, I think we'd have been way more comfortable. I do believe that with everything uh, in me. I think we would have got at least five, six more goals. I'm being, probably being generous with that, but I think we would have got more goals. Harmony saying Jaffe six, great prospect, but not featured much. I, I understand that. Uh, mix, mix saying a seven. Roscoe with a 6.5. Steven eight for Gilhart. Okay. Um, but yeah, for me, it, it's a seven and that's because I like what I see from him and I like how he's affected the games. We're talking about game winning scenarios as well, or trying to get us back into a game. We almost got a point at Stamford Bridge because of Gilhart, you know, before a certain player give away a penalty. Um, we get, he gets the last minute winner against Norwich, super composure to go with the score over Lewis Dunk in the Brighton game. Lewis Dunk, who's a fine center back, by the way. Yeah. Seven seven for him and hopefully we get to see more of him next season 
We're almost at the end, people. Just a couple names to go. Let's go, Rodrigo, man. Mr. False Dawn, man. He give me, he give me hope. And uh, when when Jesse first came in, Rodrigo gave me a little bit of hope, and I thought, are we going to get the Rodrigo? I thought we was going to get when we first signed him. <clears throat> a Stone Cold would say, we didn't. He's back to normal again, people. And Rodrigo is somebody I can definitely see leaving in the summer. I definitely think there's a deal to be done to get him uh, to go back to Spain. Uh, so, yeah, Rodrigo for me. <sighs> Overall, I'm going to give him a, a four. Yeah, four. You know what? No, three point five. Let me do that. Three point five. Yeah, I can't. I can't. I can't do any more than that. For what? What you're expecting from a player of his ilk and his quality? Nah, not for me. And when he's not effective on the ball, he's good at passing the ball forward. He's really good at that. But it's too few, and it's 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 too few. So. Yeah, yeah, Mad Max. The, the case, yeah, the case is closed. Mad Max. Let me see if I can get that coming back. Mad Max saying, "KG closed the case to send him down." Yeah, he's on. He's he's been fried already. Mad Max. Yeah, the governor called and and said, "Pull the lever." Lever's been pulled. He's he's gone. Like it, it's just not it. He, he's just not it for what. And and some of the effort as well that he he doesn't give in the game for me is is shocking. And again, it's not about work rate and running around like a headless chicken. But sometimes, just press a little bit, please. Just do something. So yeah, yeah, three point five for me. That's it. That that's the most frustrating thing. Padrino has got it here. He how does he have all the attributes but produce so little? I, that's a perfect way of rounding him up. It really is. Really is a good way of rounding him up. Um, down to the last three now, people. Uh, Patrick Bamford, if you want to give a quick rating for him. I know he's been injured. Has he been injured too much to give a rating? Well, just just give you a, give your rating for Patrick Bamford anyway. Uh, obviously, he hasn't been available for large parts of the season, um, so that that's going to be affecting his score. But I think that that kind of also goes into the, his kind of score as well. Uh, yeah, fine. you know what? It probably is. You know what? It, it's a good point. You know, maybe it's too little to to rate Bamford. Maybe it is. If I can't do a, a few other players, then maybe. Maybe that's a good point, but get get them in anyway. Um, I'll I'll just simply say that I I want new strikers in next season, regardless. Um, listen, you you can see people have got different beliefs about whether he's been as sick as as he's made out to be. You know, I won't speculate on that anymore. But I just I just think that we need to move on with the mentality of this team, and we need players that are a bit more reliable. Bit, more available for selection because even in the games he did play, yes, he's got all the intangibles of holding up the ball and making space and everything else like that. But he missed a couple of sitters. I, I don't remember the game specifically there were, but I remember there was two where all he had to do was just slot him in the bottom corner and he put them both just wide of the post and it would have been easier to score. So for me, yeah, it's about, it's about getting better than Patrick Bamford, but yeah, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to give him a three. There you go. You know, I can't give him a three. I'll give, I'll give him a two. Yeah. He hasn't done nothing. It's a two. Let's move on. Uh, Tyler Roberts, people. <laughs> We're not going to spend long on this one, people. Please. You know, Tyler. Right. Um, Tyler Roberts, what can we say? Uh, we, we have to judge it because he was getting uh, time under Bielsa. And, you know, Jesse Marsh left him limping on the pitch. But listen, we have we have to judge him. So, wow, I mean, LUFC fan, that's a number I can't compute. Uh, four D Wex, 
How are you giving him a four? I, I don't get how it's that high. Donny Keys minus four. A lot of zeros. I can understand that. Mad Max minus 10, minus 10. Roberts one. Sorry, it's going too quick, so I'll get on the, the ones I can. Uh, Tom Gatlin, uh, Roberts get him so end of. I, I echo that one. That wow. Uh, Ricky Isle uh, said minus one. LUFC Sinster saying two, no end product. Sam S. Warsaw are looking for a striker. Are they that desperate? <laughs> but I know, yeah, Jack, Jack Simpson, it's cruel to rate him. Yeah. But that's why I'm not going to harp on him too much. But what I will say is, you see the difference, even from Sam Greenwood. Let's forget about Joe Gilhart. Sam Greenwood, when he's made his cameo appearances, has been so much more effective than Tyler Roberts ever was. Not is, ever was. You know, this guy has made over 100 appearances for our, our great club. Over 100. And he's, what, is he even in double figures for us in goals? I don't know. But Sam Greenwood has made more of effect this year than, than Tyler Roberts will ever do at Leeds United. And it is, it's time for him to go. It is, it's time for him to leave in the summer. Um, yeah, James, but he's young and promising KG. He's gonna be he's gonna be one of these like Jesse Lingard. They still talk about Jesse Lingard like he's 21 and he's like 30 now. But yeah, for me, he, yeah, he's gotta go. He's got to go. I mean, when we're talking about I even I even thought as well when, when we were close to being relegated. I, I wouldn't even want him in the champ because he wasn't even good in the championship either. The only thing people will come back to me and say is, remember the whole game? Yeah, I do, because that's all he ever did. So that that's, again, an indictment on, on the talent ID by Bielsa. Keep on bringing him on first as well, by the way. And he just got, he just come on and do nothing. He, he'd stay on the touchline, lose the ball, kick it out of play. No no glue in, in trying to create attacks. No goals. Yeah. For me, it's a it's it's a zero. Zero for Tyler from me. Just a zero. You know, I, I can't go minus like a lot of you guys did. That was tremendous, by the way. But yeah, Tyler, zero. Now we go on to the other end of the spectrum, and this will be the last one of the player ratings. And thank you to everyone. Listen, this this uh video has been lit, man. You guys have been rocking with me for all of these uh for a long time. What is this? We're coming up to an hour 40. Tremendous interaction as well. You, you guys make it what it is, honestly. Um, Irish Assassin, slap the likes. Yeah, please do that for me. It, it's free. Just uh, hit the like button on the video. Please do that for me. But yes, the last and certainly not least, the star man. Ah, the man that brings so much joy. Rafinha, people, one to ten. Let's go. Uh, now, I mean, it goes without saying what mine is going to probably be. Um, I'm going to give Rafinha, and this is an overall, and I'm going to give my reasons why. Uh, I'm going to give him a solid 8.5. No, 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 a nine, nine. I'm going to round it up, nine. Um, oh, 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 well, I'm call me delusional then, no scope zone. Call me delusional. But I'm going to give him a nine. Reason being is that, yes, the talent around him isn't nowhere near his level. It's not. But I, I still think that in certain games, we could have got a little bit more out of him. And I, and I liken it to Richarlison at Everton, where... Richarlison was coming up with goals and, and and things like that. I think we could have got the same out of Rafinha, but we didn't uh, up until the, the last one, uh, until the last game where he, he put it all on the line. Uh, and I think with more output, I think he would have been nearer to a nine or 10. Did I say eight? I've, I've, I've actually forgotten. No, no, no. I'm saying a nine. No, but I'm saying nine overall because without him, and this is the main bit as well, why I'm saying a nine, yeah, is that without his without his um, numbers, without his play this year, we would have been relegated, man. We would have been relegated without him. And look at this. You've got completely different ends of the spectrum here. Harmony saying Rafa is seven, had a few poor games. Otherwise, it would have been more. 
And then somebody else has said 10 out of 10. Uh, creative Soul, 10 out of 10. Yeah. But listen, the nine overall becomes of the because of where the club status is. Otherwise, I would have probably said an eight. That's what I was trying to get at. It would have been an eight, but because we were so close to the drop without him, we would be playing championship football. So for me, I give him a nine for that. Um, if he had got more goals, what I believe he's more than capable of doing, then he would have been a ten. But yeah, everyone, yeah, exactly. Every everyone has a as, as a few as a uh, few poor games. Absolutely. But I do think, and, and, I, and I will say this until the end, I, I still believe that the January transfer window affected his form. I genuinely believe that maybe contracts would have been signed if new players had come in, as, as they would have probably expected. And then once the window shut, we saw that, that he did have a dip in form in the next few games. He wasn't on it at all. I know he'd come back from international duty with Brazil, but I do think that he was expecting a few bodies to come in and help the team out a bit more. So... Yeah, for me, Kate, it, it's a nine from me, easy. And that's largely on the base. So without him, we'd be a championship club right now. Um, <laughs> James, that's tremendous. Um, we're not giving Stuart McKinstry a rating, Cage. Now, not today, man. Maybe another time. But that, that that's, I mean, it, James is joking there, obviously. But that's what we've got to avoid next season, people. And that's why the names at the start are so important. Names like that and other names that the board will have, obviously, is that we're not given, with all due respect to Stuart McKinstry, and I'm sure his family loved it, I'm sure he loved it, but he had no business starting or getting on the pitch, sorry, for Leeds United in the Premier League. He had no business doing it. And that's what we've got to avoid next season. So that is it, people. Oh, 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 oh. what are we doing? Are we rating, should we rate Bielsa and, and Marsh? I, I don't, I, I mean, should we just put, you know what, should we just roll management all into one? No, because then that's not really fair. Oh, I don't know. Oh, Lord. Uh, all right, then, let, let's go with it then. Bielsa, Bielsa, let's just quickly get this one out of the way. Uh, Bielsa, uh, give him a rating out of 10 people. Scott Lightning, Noah Kenner left Leeds with more yellows in appearance. Tremendous. He got booked on the bench. Tremendous. <laughs> Tremendous. Ah, oh, man. Good luck to him at Ibs as well, by the way. Good luck to him. Uh, yeah. God, it's it's tough, man. It's tough. I would I would I would roll them all into one personally, but yeah, there's some be also fun. Yeah, ah, oh, you know, I don't, I'm not. I don't want to do that. If you, if you guys want to do that in the in the comments, do so. Um, I would, I would just rate management as a whole, really. Um, and, it, and it's got to be a low score, hasn't it? It's got to be, it's got to be very low, in terms of recruitment and then tactics from the first manager, even questionable tactics and selections from Jesse too. But he kept us up in the end, so that has to be count for something. God, this is tough. It's tough. Management as a whole. Yeah, you know what, guys? Do management as a whole. Let's do. do let's just do management as a whole. Uh, if you want to do individuals in the comments, do so uh, below uh, after the video is done. Uh, management as a whole, three. Yeah. Um, Martin Peter saying management as a whole, zero. That's why we're in the position we're in. Yeah. Uh, ben saying Marsh seven, uh, keeping us up the board gets a two. Uh, Mark saying Bielsa five, stubbornness is down four. Yeah, he got he had his belief. He died on his sword, man. Um, Matt Smith with a three. Okay. Jay Patel, this season overall has been a one out of ten. Only thing that could have gone worse is three points less. Yeah, yeah. You know what, Jay? I, I'd go with that one, one, and that's purely because. They gambled. They really, they literally gambled from the start of this season. It's been gambles all the way in terms of sticking with Bielsa as long as they did. And even I'm guilty of that as well. Um, not doing anything in the January window, not getting rid of Bielsa before the January window, keeping him and, and then sacking him at the end of February, bringing in a Jesse Marsh in at that point. It's all been a gamble, people. And they got lucky. 
they got lucky. Someone's just said it here. David Evans, board one, they got lucky. Absolutely. The gamble just about paid off. I mean, yes, we finished three points above the drop zone overall. Absolutely. But it came down to the last day, people. So lessons have to be learned. They've got to do better. They have to do better. Start to have uncomfortable conversation with the players they've got, the players that they love here, and just say, listen, it's time for you to either accept your reduced role or you've got to go. That's got to be said. If they're not doing that, then we're going to be at the same point next season. Because if we have, let's just say we don't sign any players, which would be catastrophic. We're going down next season. If we're not surviving with this club, with this team, the squad, the way it is. We're just not. So hopefully they've learned their lesson. But yeah, the gamble paid off just about. And uh, I agree with that one, one out of 10. Some people saying three. Yeah. If you like, yeah. It was a risk gamble, but worth it, yeah. But yeah, listen, oh, Martin E with a super chat. Thank you so much for the donation. But that is it. That is it. Um, that is it for the video. It's been a long one. You've stuck with me for long. A lot of you have stuck with me for a long time. Um, but this has been a lot of fun. I didn't think that the, the um, play ratings would be as much fun as it was, but it was. And yeah, anything that you guys want to put in the comments about the video, what I've discussed there, if you're watching the replay, just put them in. Put in your play ratings after. Um, they did, Graham Wood, say, just saying there, management took the tough decision and it kept us up. They did. It, like I say, though, it just about uh, worked. Lee Marshall say, Alison Chains fan, KG, well, Casey KG, kind of similar, I guess. But yes, yes, I am, man. Um, big fan of Alison Chains. Um, a lot of that grunge uh, scene, Soundgarden and, and all those guys. I like a lot of different music, though, because I can even say to you, I like NSYNC. Like, it don't matter to me. If, if my ears like it, I'm listening to it. You know, one of them. That's why I had Rich from Five on my channel earlier this season, because I was a big Five fan. So <laughs> it's all good. Um, but yeah, listen, we'll, we'll end. Oh, Mr. P with one last super chat. KG rating 100 out of 10 for the sessions. Uh, what a way to leave it, man. Thank you so much. Um, I hope you guys have enjoyed the video, though, and, and the topics in, uh, uh, talked about. See you in the next one, whenever that may be, whenever the next piece of big news comes in. But hope you enjoyed that. And thank you so much for the love in the chat today. It's been excellent. Excellent. Love it. And don't forget, if you want to win the Rafinha shirt, it's on the video before this one. So peace out, people. Peace.